that. So we're just going to start rolling. We're doing Malthusian theory, as I said. Before we start going, a mandatory advertisement of Fiveable. Follow them on social media. It's at Think Fiveable. They have an Instagram. They have a Twitter. They have a YouTube. If you're taking an AP class, it's good stuff. They have a whole bunch of AP classes, not just human geography. It's good for everything. Follow it. It's epic. We're in that next one. You got this cool little table of contents. We're going to start out pre-stream knowledge. Get a base where you guys are at. If you need to backtrack a little bit and explain some more basic concepts, if you guys are further ahead and I can you know, speed through some more basic things. We're going to go through population density and carrying capacity because those are very important to the theory that we're going to be over. We're going to go to Thomas Malthus, obviously, if you want to understand the theory. Not understand theory. If you want to look really good on the AP test when they ask an FRQ about it, you're going to want to know about Thomas Malthus. You get such a massive one up over the guy next to you because he doesn't know about Thomas Malthus, but you do. And the guy reading your, your FRQ and he's scoring, he's going to say, this guy knows about Thomas Malthus, and he's not even going to read it. He's just going to say you got all the points. Then we're going to actually go over his theory, followed by the context of the theory, why it was written, and why it hasn't come to pass yet. This great thing that he said was going to happen didn't happen. And then we're going to go over Neo-Malthusians, the guys who think that theory is pretty cool. It's going to happen. We're going to do uh, practice, mainly comparison of pre-stream knowledge, see if I did anything useful all over the entire stream. And we're going to do an open Q&A. That's what you guys have been seeing in your classes over the past week. What streams you want to see moving forward? Brief stream knowledge. All right. So we got one question, or the first question. We have three questions. It's not that bad. Uh, and obviously, if you get one wrong, no one cares. It's, it's not bad. But uh, how did Malthus claim that the food production of Earth was growing? It's first one. And how does population grow as well? Because they were distinctly different in this theory. If no one goes in chat, I can just give the answer. I can get it. But I'm obviously going to give the little time space answer now if you're going to answer, just for practice's sake. We got, is that someone new or is it, is it refreshed? All right, it's just refreshing. Chat's really quite, this is weird. I don't know if I did something wrong because I'm not seeing chat move at all. And if I refresh this, I, my stream might just die. Is chat working? Chat. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Chat works. This is a massive revelation. This is incredible. I feel so comforted. I'm just going to pop forward with the answers. It doesn't look like anyone's particularly jumping forward to answer it. You guys don't need to practice, but for anyone watching the VOD uh, with your with your Vimeo account, he's got the premium and all that stuff. Uh, Thomas Malthus, obviously, cl he claimed that food was growing, food production was growing arithmetically and population was growing. Um, oh my God, I forget the word. Exponentially, that's the word I was looking for, exponentially. Second question, what country acted as the most prominent example of Malthus' prediction coming true? There was one country in particular that you're really looking for this. I'm not expecting chat to really jump forward. You guys certainly seem confident in yourselves to do that. I'll skip the VOD seconds ago. If you're in the VOD, pause right now. I really hope you enjoyed that VOD. The country you're looking for here is India. India was a really good example because people starved a lot. And he said, yeah, India's gone. We should let them starve. Thank you, Thomas Malthus. Very cool. That was a, that was a, that was a hot take right there. Uh, what were some measures? Malthus suggested Im uh, implementing to limit population growth. This is a bit further ahead. I really don't remember the schedule for AP and Geography. I don't know if you guys have gotten to this one. This is sort of the end of his theory. Um, but if you're watching the VOD, this is where you would pause the video. Well, you had a really good thing about that one, Vod. Uh, there were some very cool ideas there, and I'm really glad you got those up. So what we're looking here is forced sterilization is a pretty big one, and that's like the main one. And he also just kind of decided to leave the people who were going to starve to do so, so they there wouldn't be as much people and food, um, food production wouldn't have to be as high. Now we're starting... Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, wow, that was cool. Now we're going to get into, like, the actual lesson. The The pop quiz is over. It's ended. It's all gone, right? Stream's still working. That's pretty cool. Population density. What is that? Mm. Uh, it, I apologize. I'm feeling under the weather, to say the least. For the third time, we're, we're moving past the little quiz thing. Population density and carrying capacity. These are some basic things you're going to want to know to understand the theory. 
so we're going to have to go over them. Population density, you're looking at three different kinds to say. There's arithmetic density, that's the total number of people in the region that you're looking at over the total square kilometers that's in of land that's encased in the region. This is going to just be useful pretty much explicitly for saying how much room people have to live. Um, sometimes these will correlate, sometimes not, because sometimes you'll have a country like India, they've got very high uh, was it arithmetic density in some parts, they also have very high agricultural density. Sometimes they won't, there will be uh, plenty of, or not plenty of, there will be almost no arable land and the other things will be really high. And this will be pretty all right, people have a lot of space to live, it changes. Second one, agricultural density. You're cutting out the majority of the people here in most cases. You're just doing farmers. Farm. Oh, we got another person here. Oh, I'm breaking so many records. I don't know what I did. I should do it more. What's up, all the guys and girls? What's pop? Others. How you doing? Uh, if you... Well, for new people, if, I, if you need me to go back over anything, just tell me. I can pop back. It's not too bad. I, I have time. Um, second one, I call density, like I said, cut up most population, it's farmers over total square kilometers of arable land. If you don't know what arable land is, it's land that can be used for growing crops. If you put a seed in it, you can reasonably expect that something's going to grow from the seed instead of you just having a sad dead seed in the ground that you can like, I don't cry over or like pop it in your mouth and just see what happens. But you're not going to get much use out of it unless it's planted in arable land. Um, oh, wait, I know this person is. What's up? August... Harvey, how you doing? Uh, physiological density. That's the total number of people over the square kilometers of arable land in a region. Um, While well, the last one might tell you, in most cases, the limit of agricultural production. Let's say look at the Netherlands, because they just stopped caring at some point. Um, and they're tiny, and they're like the second highest output, something like that, of uh, crops. It's really weird. But for the most part, uh, agricultural density is going to tell you how much food they can put out. Physiological density is going to tell you the strain on agriculture, how much they need to put out, or how hard they have to try to put it out to make sure someone doesn't die of starvation. Or it's going to tell you, yeah, they're dying of starvation. Whoops. Uh, moving on, carrying capacity. This is just the maximum amount of people a region can support, how many people you can have without someone having to die because there's not enough things there to support them. Uh, if they do get more, like the carrying capacity is 300 people, I'm a pretty cool guy. I think, no, uh, I don't care. I'm going to bring 320 people into this little park. 20 people are going to have to die. Whoops. Um, to make sure there's enough resources for everyone. Because if we just try and do it, then 20 people are going to starve to death at the, at the minimum. Probably more than that because there's not going to be, you're going to have to try and disperse things since now everyone's not getting enough. So, like, 30 people die, and now you have 290, and it starts racing up to 302, and then five people die, and it does that. Um, so, yeah, and things will affect this. Obviously, if your space is taken away, then the region can't support as many because it's a smaller region. But if a big blight sweeps through the fields and the area around the fields can't support as much, if there's a flood, Sorry, but you're dead now. Um, oh, there's something to ask a question. What's popping? Malthusian theory. We're going to get to that. That is that is part of it. We're covering the very basis. So, Charlie, we're, we're going to get to your question. That is one of them. We have to cover the basics for people who, I guess, aren't super far ahead because I don't really know the schedule of classes. I haven't gotten anything from the tests, obviously, so I can't base a whole lot. This is a chart of theory and capacity. The one thing I don't like about this chart, you, you will see the, the blue or purple here. This is carrying capacity. This is not, this isn't what it does. The carrying capacity doesn't go up with population. I think what this is trying to do is it's trying to show the change with um, industrialization and our ability to farm. Um, but normally what you're going to see is just a flat line. That This is the maximum it can take. I guess there is a sort of justification for raising it as we develop, but normally you're just not going to see that. And it kind of looks like the population is what's bringing it up, and I don't like that very much. Overshoot, it's just, if you go over it, someone has to die to bring you under it. If you go under it, you might shoot over again, and someone's going to die, and it's going to happen, and it's not a good time. Moving on, Thomas Malthus, you don't understand the theory, you're not interested. If you want to do good on the test, if you don't remember this, 
you're going to get an A in the class if you remember everything else, because this, this is never brought up in the class. If you get an FRQ on this, you're going to want to know this, because the guy next to you is on the same base if you don't know this. You can do the same thing. So if you know this, you can blow the, the FRQ grader away. He'll be astonished by your sheer intelligence. He, he'll be memorized. India sanitation crisis is uh, just natural selection. <laughs> So I'm gonna now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. So there is a question. I, I guess it's sort of on topic. I'll accept this. What do you say that India's sanitation crisis is just natural selection countering the, the full effect of overpopulation? Now, I would say that a lot of the basic what is it environmental factors like overpopulation. You got to realize that humans have advanced to a certain point where we can just kind of say I don't care to uh, to what the environment says to us. There is a point where the environment can push back, but for overpopulation, we just kind of say, I don't care. So I wouldn't say it's due to overpop. It's due to overpopulation, but it's also due to a lack of, I guess, capital to counter it, because we could support that many people. We would just need the capital to build systems. So <laughs> I wouldn't put it under natural selection, obviously, because it's not really pushing a species forward through evolution, and that's what natural selection is. When I say it's an effect of overpopulation, to an extent, yes, but I would also say it's a lack of capital. Uh, I don't really know if I'll put that one in the stream because it's not very on topic. I might pop it in there, but there's your question answered. At least from my point of view, I didn't really think it through. If it's stupid and it sounds stupid, it's probably stupid. Uh, but the question was all right. I, I can accept that kind of... Whoa, we hit seven. What's happening? What did I do? Who's new? All right. What's up, Ad Nelson? How you doing? You having a nice day? I hope so. I didn't close that. There we go. Now I can do this again. Thomas Malthus. All right. Two cents. Amen. Thirty-three percent is like on a mount. If you can be better than thirty-three percent of people at everything, you'd be pretty good. You'd be pretty set. So uh, there, there's an extent of justification for it. Thomas Malthus. When he was a when he was a small boy. He, people laughed at him because his toes were together. He had webbed feet. His toes. And uh, this kind of led to him being a proponent of eugenics. And that was kind of controversial. That's still kind of controversial. Thomas Malthus has a theme of being a controversial guy. Uh, later he went on. Uh, he would become a demographer. He was later considered an economist. But way before that, he was a, dem uh, he was a demographer. He rose prominence through a very important thing that established the entire Malthusian theory, a little, a little thing called the, uh, an essay on the principle of population. That was written in 1798. I'm going to be real with you. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I, was, I thought it was written in the 1800s. I was very mistaken. 1798, that's a date right there. Uh, it questions how population and the way po population grew and economy grew uh, affected the economy. He was also a founding member of the Political Economy Club, and he was a university teacher. I'm pretty sure students called him the webbed foot teacher, and that's something. But it's an observation. These are what are really important. Um, in his little wacky essay right there, he noted that whenever an abundance of food or of anything, whenever a surplus is produced, population will grow. So that means that if I have 10 people and I produce enough food where each people gets double what they need to just live, and they're pretty pleased with it. They're like, I don't know, sipping luxury drink, diet Pepsi, and they're having a grand time. What will happen is 10 new people will appear through reproduction, and now there is no diet Pepsi. They have no luxury. They're having an awful time. Quality of life has stayed the same. They're sitting back having a terrible day, munching diet bread. And that's not what you want. He called this thing the Malthusian trap. Every time quality of life tried to improve, people said no and had children. <clears throat> he also noted that because of this, um, he didn't think that a utopian society was obtainable. Utopia was a very popular concept at the time. And he said, I don't, I don't care. It's not going to happen. Uh, your dreams have been shattered by me. I shattered. They're gone. Uh, I'll just these 90s findings in 1798, as I said, uh, essay on the population or principle of population. Malthusian theory. We're here. 
We reached it. We reached his theory. That's a bit of a theory moment. Anyone need me to go back on anything, or do you think you're ready to push into the theory and all, all little aspects of that? You got six people here still. I'm I'm more than happy with that. Twelve people registered. That's pretty cool. My record of registers is like five before this. This is epic. No one seems to need me to go back. We're pushing the Malthusian theory. The main principle of the theory um, that was adopted. This is very, very popular during the, uh, the 1900s, late 1800s, was that um, human population is going to outgrow food production. And if there's more people than there are food, you've gone over your carrying capacity, and people are going to die. Uh, he said this because he was seeing population begin to grow up check, uh, unchecked, and food production was just sitting there. Uh, it was kind of just plodding along. It wasn't doing much. It was being kind of lazy. So population was catching up to food uh, at what he saw as a very alarming rate. Um, and when population went over food production, something called a Malthusian crisis would occur and everyone would get sick and die until uh, population went under food production. And he thought that it would just kind of me and that's what population would do. Uh, and that would not be very cool because it would mean a lot of people starve to death. Uh, impacts of what would happen, obviously, widespread famine and disease, as I said, uh, and then solutions he proposed. Now, this disease, he would note, would probably take place in the most part in southern and southeastern Asia, obviously, would be more of a widespread, like, global thing. But what he was saying is, um, Asia's dead. Asia's not having a great time. He uh, he pointed them out as just being kind of, they've already ran the course, they're already about to jump over their food production and die. Uh, and he thought that's going to keep happening. Uh, obviously, if it's going to spread to everywhere, it's going to happen there, but it's going to happen a lot right there. They're going to die like crazy, and they're going to shoot back up, and they're going to die like It's going to not be very cool. Um, this is called a population bomb as well. Um, as well. This is called a population bomb, what they thought was. Um, the fuse was growing instead of shrinking, but this is a bomb. The fuse is going over here. This is food production bomb, and it's going to hit this, and it's going to explode, and everyone's going to die. I'm going to get influenza and drop dead in the street and i'm not going to be very pleased about it to be frank solutions forced sterilization now this isn't a very cool idea this isn't what we would generally say i'm a big fan of forced sterilization that's just not what we do but he saw this as necessary he thought they should really you know, run over to india and say you're not having children and then make sure he didn't have children I have, I'm not sure I understand your question, Charlie. Oh, uh, I got two. I guess one got removed. I don't get it. All right, we got two questions. I'll see what's going on here. Thing is that technology advances and accounts for you. All right, uh, very good question from uh, August. And we're going to get to that. That is like the two sections away, obviously why this didn't happen. Uh, it's a lot of, yes, human technology that's accounting for the population increase. Oh. For legal reasons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would answer this question now, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, one child part is... I still don't want you solution yeah I'll, I'll go for this one the one child policy definitely took a lot of uh i'll say inspiration from him because the entire idea was we can't support this many people um so yeah you're not allowed to have children after one they wanted the population to either stop growing or shrink at to a point it was also just kind of a way for the government to make money because if you're gonna have children uh pay up uh so yeah there was definitely that, was, that can definitely be considered a part of his solution, but obviously didn't have anything to do with it. It was more of a Chinese idea. It took a lot of inspiration from it, I would say. I wouldn't quote me on that. They directly heard Thomas Malthus is this cool European guy, and I want to be like him. And then they said, stop making children. But you can definitely make connection between the two. And if you don't directly say they were inspired by, by him directly, then you can get away with it, like on an AP test, gladly. They'll, they'll think you're incredibly smart. 
you can do a lot of you can do a lot of little tricks just make them think you're incredibly smart ap tests are cool it's a, it's a bit of a psychology test as well just how weird can i go uh, obviously as i said india is gone in his eyes uh, and should be allowed to just do the little loop and see what happens uh population pyramids you guys should be familiar with this um what you kind of thought was going to happen because i just figured this would be important just for visualizing Imagine this on steroids, sort of. Um, obviously, if people, if you know the population is growing rather quickly, there's going to have to be a lot of children. So you're just going to e, you're going to bring these way out, and these, they're everyone's going to die. It's, there's going to be like no one up here because they all died of disease. They can't get food to sustain themselves that old, uh, and there's going to be an incredible amount of children that just die incredibly fast because there's no food to sustain them as a child, and they're going to get sick and die. Uh, it might stabilize like here for a little bit, and then it just e, not not a very fun time. All in all, this little thing. This is what he thought was going to happen. Uh, this is food production. As you can see, it's growing. It's growing very steadily, not very fast. More than fast enough to deal with what, what was going on. What they thought was going to happen. This has been going on for like forever. Ever since the universe was created, humans grew at this rate, and food grew faster than that. This is not to scale at all. I couldn't find the picture I was looking for uh, that illustrated this incredibly well. I don't know why, because that picture should really be readily available because it's a good picture. Oh, three questions. What are we, what are we going for here? How do I do that? <laughs> Hold on, I just found something. How do I do that? Oh, yeah, uh, let, me, let me pop that out. Your question is fine, August. I'm not saying, like, this is against the rules. I'm just saying this is about to be covered in this lesson. See so, yeah, it? You're fine. There we go. I, oh, there we go. I don't know how to work this thing too good. All right. As you can see, uh, for any of you visual learners out here, right, this just sort of started peeking up. And he thought it was going to go right here. And right here, everyone's going to die. And it's going to eat more like that. And it's not going to be a good time. This is just going to kind of keep doing that forever. Uh, that's that's not what you want. Context of this theory. Uh, another one of these little charts. He lived in a time where uh, food production was still growing at the same rate that it always had ever since he knew it. Uh, obviously, it grew slower before. It's growing with the people now. But the people started to do something different because you had all all these advancements that let more people uh, be alive for what he thought was a brief second. And the population was just starting to get to this. He, he saw the very beginnings of it. And obviously, if this continued, he would arrive at a uh, Malthusian crisis. Hold up, question. Spoiler alert, we don't die. You make an incredibly good point, August. I'm not dead yet. Uh, we'll, we'll be covering yet later, but yeah, I can agree with that. We do, in fact, not die. Uh, yeah, as I said, population was growing at what had never been seen before. It was beginning to just, uh, I guess, expound upon itself. I don't think that's the right word, but for every, if two people are born, they're going to make four people and they're going to make eight, and it's going to go really awfully for everyone else eventually. Because uh, agriculture advancements stagnated. There was, you know, some cool advancements, maybe a bit before, and they stopped. They said no. Uh, and suddenly you're at the same place again. Nothing's being made as far as agriculture. Agriculture, not agriculture, but still. Uh, no, yeah, nothing new is being, happening in that field. People are, a lot of new people are happening. So humanity is nearing, uh, nearing the carrying capacity of Earth. That's not what you like to see. Uh, already see the place. This is India. That's not what you want to look like. That's like not the end goal. Uh, famines were going very common in places like that. Like you look at the Dark Ages, everyone's dying in Europe because there's no food. Uh, it's not because of over. I guess you could say it's because of overpopulation. But uh, now we're seeing we're seeing that in Asia a whole lot just because of the sheer amount of people. Oh, questions? Didn't Brazil go through this? Uh, I'm going to be really real with you. I don't know. Um, for Jasmine, Jasmine asked if Brazil 
went through a Malthusian crisis like India did, I I would answer the question. If everyone, in, if anyone in chat knows, please go ahead and tell because I don't know this one at all. I never heard about it, but I didn't hear about a lot of things, so it could have very well happened. But I I'm not the one to answer that. I would say it. I wouldn't be surprised. And if you heard about it, like from any sort of source, it's probably true because it sounds it sounds like it could very well have happened. Three was mistaken. This wacky thing called the Green Revolution. It's really sort of picking up in the 1900s because um, instead of, you know, population, you, and they're like, well, let's go faster. Population said, you, and everyone freaked out because food, food production was still doing the little thing. It wasn't doing very much. Uh, obviously, it wasn't nearly as close to 1798 as I pointed out on the graphs. That was very much an exaggeration uh, for just getting the point across, but now it was like, it was going to happen. It really, population is just a straight line. I don't know what's happening here, but food is not a, food's not going up. Food's doing, it's, it's a little jittery thing. I don't like that. Oh, and then the green revolution happened. This was just a massive across the board advancements in agriculture. You had new ways to grow things. You had new tools to do it. It was very cool. It's occurred 1950 to the late 1960s. And you normally see this, or this was very big in developing countries. Uh, this just exploded their agricultural sector uh, as we're developing countries. They're like, oh, it's pretty cool. It's a little boost. These guys just bam out of nowhere. They just happened. It was pretty cool for them. And now uh, food production wasn't growing just straight arithmetically. Food production did this and then went, you. I'm pretty sure I have this. Yeah, I have this. Food production's just doing this little thing. Population catching up with it. Oh, no. Food production, look out. Look behind you. It's population. Oh, no. He has AirPods in. And then he takes the AirPods out. Whoop, boop, boop. Man, this is obviously not a very accurate graph. This isn't what human population looks like. This is to get the point across. Um, this just shot up. This was incredible for uh, for humanity and population. Well, you know, they, they did their thing. Uh, am I moving on to the next thing? All right. No, I'm not moving on to the next thing yet because there is a point I know I forgot to put in here that I need to talk on about the demographic transition model and why it failed. Uh, but yeah, obviously, Green Revolution, food production was so much more efficient because you could you could breed these plants. This is the next one. All right. This is in the next one. Um, we really saw the Green Revolution just take hold and absolutely revolutionize uh, Latin America, South America, and Asia. And obviously, Asia is where the big problem was. He said India's gone. There's nothing we can do to help India. Let's just watch, maybe grab some popcorn and laugh. Um, and then, you know, rice happened. Um, and this failed hardcore in Africa. They didn't get much of anything from it. And the reason it failed in Africa was largely due to an inability to invest the capital needed to, like, get this. Um, because a lot of this is a lot more expensive than just... You know, like, oh, I got a new spade. Oh, I have a new hammer. Uh, no, this is, I need a, a new, I don't know, big old tractor that has wings on it, and it grabs the seeds with a, a tail made of fire, and it throws them eight miles across, and it costs your entire life savings. Um, and they didn't have the ability to invest in that. And if you can't invest in it, you can't get the returns in it. So you just kind of have to sit there and watch everyone else have a nice time. Seeing the questions, on, there's a little bit of a break point happen to European countries. Because, uh, what does probably happen to you? Um, <laughs> August Harvey asks, Hammer, the answer is yes. Um, would this happen to European countries because some people are migrating to them? Now, oh, let me read this for this. Um, also, would this probably happen to European countries because so many people are migrating to them? I'm not 100% sure what this means. If you mean modern days, uh, then I wouldn't say so because we're so far advanced. If you mean in ye olden days, then this was definitely a fear when the theory was crafted that this would be a widespread thing. And during the 1900s, they kind of thought that this is going to spread everywhere. Um, the population bomb was definitely a big thing. So I would say that the idea was there that this would happen in European countries, in the United States and Canada. But would it happen? Um, it really depends. If everyone moved there suddenly and then the entire population of South America was in the United States, yeah, it would happen there. 
Um, but there's also alternate scenarios where they just say, yeah, you're not coming in, and then doesn't happen there, and it's, it's fine for them. It You can't say for certain, but the idea was there. The fear was there. Everyone thought it was going to happen in European countries in North America. So if that answers your question, there you go. Um, if you if it doesn't answer your question, I'm sorry. Well, let me remove Brazil, um, just because I, I don't know. Uh, corn Man asks, when do we get to the part about corn? You know, I, w I like to think that every part is about corn, because I live and breathe uh, corn. Corn is all I do. Uh, if that answers your question, um, you're welcome. If it doesn't answer your question, you're welcome. Technologies that were associated with the Green Revolution. There, there was a there's a little bit of a doozy of them. This was pretty cool for everyone involved. You had a very widespread adoption uh, and advancement in mechanization. This meant that farming was a lot more capital intensive for the areas that chose to adopt this. Capital intensive, of course, means that you don't need a lot of manpower. You need a lot of money. Um, that's uh, it, Susan. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Cormac. I'm glad I could do a service to the corn peoples. Um, and obviously, if you need more money and less manpower, that meant you don't need five people on this plot of land. If I can get one guy in a pretty nice tractor to do it, uh, so yeah, it just it really just exploded the amount of work one guy could do. It's like the cotton gin, but with less slavery involved. Interbreeding crops. This was probably the biggest thing, I would argue, um, because interbreeding crops has sort of gotten us to the crazy amount of production we have right now. Um, you would just take two crops that have things you want, and you would combine them, and now you have a really cool crop. This crop is probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. This wheat is really short and easy to harvest. This wheat makes just a stupid amount of wheat. This is so much wheat. This corn... This is the, the, the cob on this corn is massive. This cob is the size of me. I could ride like this cob into town with some wheels on it and I could pick up more corn. This corn over here is really resilient to disease. This corn won't die. I fought this corn hand on hand with a knife and it beat me. I'm dead now and the corn is fine. If we breed these two corns together, the, this corn, corn that we've produced is a super corn. This corn can destroy all other corn produced before it and all other forms of vegetation. It is a massive corn that won't die. It could stomp your city out in just like with one kernel and you can't do anything about it. You can shove, I don't know, corn blight at it. I don't know any corn diseases. Um, and it would, it would shrug off the corn blight. It would say, no, I'm not going to die. And what are you going to do when corn tells you it's not going to die? Nothing. You're going to cry, and the corn's going to get you. Widespread use of fertilized pesticides. Obviously, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you put a fertilizer in your dirt, then your crops are going to grow better because there's more nutrients there. Put pesticides on your, your crops, they're going to die less because, you know, fungicide, fungal infections are gone. Uh, pesticide, the insects that are eating your crops, they are gone. That sort of thing. It, it just makes it, makes the problems go away. And that's what you like to see. Oh, we got a question. Let's see what the question is. Let's put the ways humans are making things change. Oh, yes, the DTM. I'm going to speak about that. I'll, I'll do this as a question because it's not in the slides. Um, August Harvey asks about where the DTM comes into this, because I did forget to pull this into the slides uh, while we're talking about why this didn't work. Yes, um, demographic transition model. Uh, obviously, when he did this, we were starting to see exponential growth. And when we look at demographic transition model, you will see that as death rates start to fall, birth rates stay the same, and the population has to shoot up because of that. Um, but once you move past stage two and three, then the population growth starts to slow down, the birth rates start to drop, all the death rates stay the same. So uh, it could be said, and I think it would be very accurate to be said, that uh, this exponential population growth he was so terrified of was a temporary thing. 
because obviously as you move forward, the, uh, the population growth is going to slow. And if your population growth is slowing, it isn't growing exponentially, is it? And if you're, presumably your agricultural production is not slowing down, I would certainly hope not, uh, it's growing arithmetically, then it can, and it's gonna, it's gonna it can do its thing because uh, population can only go so fast for so long. And uh, food production is eternal. You can't get rid of food production. I've tried. The food production won. Neo-Malthusians. I'm sure you know what Neo is. It's, it's, someone used to do this. Now I do it. Malthusian. Malthusian theory. We're all going to die. Neo-Malthusians, modern advocates of Malthus' ideas. Uh, so they think that somewhere down the line, we're still going to exceed the carrying capacity of Earth and die a terrible, horrible death, famine, ow, no food. Um, and these guys, were, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna believe in population control programs because of that. Because if they think population's gonna run away, they're gonna say, why don't we just make it stop? And if we make it stop, we win. We beat population. Um, these are much less extreme population. Uh, control programs, so what Malthus had in mind, because he just said, yeah, you're no longer allowed to have children, real sorry about that, but, you know, I, I had to do it, and there was no other way. Um, they're more advocates for preventative birth control and that kind of stuff, so that you can just, you know, don't have children, maybe. Uh, someone's got to do it. <laughs> hey, look. That was taken out of context. And that's all I'm going to say about that. All but the corn man will be gone. You know what? The corn man is eternal. He won't leave. He's been in my house for three days. Yeah, uh, they're, they're pretty chill, I, I'd say. They say we're all going to die. But they also don't say um, your, your birthing rights hand them over. Practice. It's pop quiz time. I just love a good pop quiz. They're my favorite. But instead, here's two questions. Uh, yeah, I answered that, and that was in the lesson, so. How do you tell CBR, CDR, and infant mortality rate is on the DTM? All right, well, that's a fair question. All right, so, and mortality rate? Ah, uh, they're sort of, uh, well, Jasmine asks, how do you tell what the uh, crude birth rate, crude death rate, and infant mortality rate is on the DTM? Uh, so, the crude birth rate and crude death rate are just going to be two lines. The way you're going to tell them apart is the crude death rate is the one that falls first. Uh, so, you're going to have two lines that are just sort of doing this. Um, and then one of them is going to plummet. He's going to, he's going to, Go for a little trip. He's going to trip and fall down the stairs and ow. Uh, so that's the crude death rate. The crude death rate falls first because there's uh, advancements in food. The people are going to have enough food to live. Their immune systems are going to get stronger. There's advancements in medicine, all that crazy stuff. The crude birth rate then is the one that falls second because essentially people just decide it's not economically viable to have children or I'm just not feeling it. Uh, I'm not going to have kids. What you don't really see until society is developed. Infant mortality rate is not on the demographic transition model. Um, I Maybe it's on some version that I haven't seen before, but I've certainly never seen it on a demographic transition model. Um, there is a growth rate, and that's just the space between the crude death rate and the, uh, the crude birth rate. That's telling you how fast population is growing. And then when you get to stage five, which is sort of the iffy stage, does it exist? Then what you will see is that crude birth rate is the one that's falling. Uh, it's not doing that, and then crude death rate goes down. Uh, it's crude birth rate that goes through it, and suddenly you have negative population growth. Obviously, uh, I see your birth rate, or not particularly obviously, but if your crude birth rate is on the bottom, that means that the uh, the growth rate, the space between them, now becomes negative. Finally, with Mark, you taught me more than my <laughs> geography teacher last year. You can just retake the exam. You should just watch all of my streams and then retake the exam. And then when they give you the check back, give me your, give me the check back. Please, I need money. All right, slide time. Practice. When this game call. Hey, man. 
I'm something of a pro. I'm pretty good at the game. Uh, Thomas Bounce predictions not come true. Yeah, this is if I'm gonna throw it in chat if you guys want to answer it. Uh, if not, I'll just give the VOD some time because it's gonna get posted at some point. But yeah, this is good for practice, good for engagement. What caused Mouse's prediction to not come true? What events? Uh, there are a couple of right answers here. There's one real obvious one that they're gonna expect you to give. You can give the other one, it'll be pretty cool. But you'll, you're gonna want to combine them uh, if you try to give one on like an exam, uh, per se. I'm gonna give the VOD a second. I'm gonna see you still watching. So we have fallen. I don't know if it's new people though. Ah, it's, it's all it's all the same people. That's good. That's cool. It's never happened before. Oh, yo, can I like? Nah, that's not a good idea. I was gonna do polls, but I don't think I could do it. Ah, very good for these. All right, I'm not seeing much in the chat. If the chat doesn't want to answer, the chat has spoken. What am I supposed to do? Uh, I can't. I can't fight the chat. They're too far away. Guys on the VOD, I hope you have your answer. The corn man caused Mouth's predictions to not come true. I'll accept it. I'll accept the answer. Uh, other other answers do include uh, the Green Revolution. Obviously, the Green Revolution caused the big old spike in food production. Food production said, I'm about to head out. And then it did. It really zoomed up there. It climbed the ladder and it didn't even fall down. What a, what a hunk. The other one was uh, movement along the demographic transition model as... Harvey brought up, and I almost forgot to bring up. Oh, question. Oh, I'll explain this first. Uh, yeah, demographic transition model, the birth or growth rate, I would say, just shoots up at the beginning, and that's what Thomas Malthus was seeing. Thomas Robert Malthus. And he said, oh, no, we're going to die. And then everyone in 1900 said, oh, wow, that's a, that's a straight line. We're, we're gone. There's nothing you can do about it. But then you move forward, and it just... Oh, my microphone. Sorry if that made a terrible noise. It just... The growth rate kind of heads down. It falls. It takes a trip. A little road trip. It goes down a hill. It skateboards down the hill at an incredibly fast rate because the birth rate suddenly plummets. Uh, all right, that's, that's the question. We have a question here. But would Malthus subscribe to the Smug? Now, I can't speak much on the Smug Scribbles YouTube channel. But I can say it sounds like a very quality production. I don't know if anyone in the VOD is going to want to see this. I'm going to have to just take the question out. Very unfortunate. It does break my heart to take out the Smug Scribbles YouTube channel. But I think Thomas Malthus... Uh, Thomas Malthus would not be the kind of guy to subscribe to the Smug Scribbles YouTube channel. I don't think he would. He's, he's too cold-hearted. He's not a very he's not a very big fan of the Smug Scribbles YouTube channel. The next question is: What were the major advancements of the Green Revolution? We discussed the effects of it in the last question. We discussed the effects and advancements of it obviously earlier in the stream. So to see if I got anything done uh, in the chat, and for the VOD people to do some practice. Hey, what's up, VOD people? Yeah, I'm talking to you. No, I'm not talking to you. And that's what you like to see. I'm going to give, obviously, the chat, they always need their time, a short amount of time to see if the chat is interested, if the chat takes the bait. I'm getting corn links. I mean, it's corn, but, uh, yeah, it's corn. That's an incredibly good question, and I will do it right after this one. Uh, we have a question, and they yeah, ask a question. I'm going to answer it right after this. But for the major advance of the Green Revolution, which is the uh, advancement of widespread adoption of mechanization in farming, you're looking at the hybridization of plants. Um, this plant go with this plant, make good plant. What a cool plant. And you see uh, the advancement and widespread adoption of pesticides, fungicides, all that wacky stuff. And fertilizers, of course. Moving on to this. I like this question. All right. What would conditions be like in a stage one to five of a population pyramid, and how would they affect the economy? This is asked by Jasmine. Now, when you're in stage one, you would see a very wide base, like just 
inconceivably. It's just massive because the birth rates are at their highest there, and they're just mixing with death rates. So it's going to close in extremely fast. You're going to have a serialized base, and then just kind of whoop. And very fast. It's going to look sort of like stage two, but uh, but smaller, I would say, and with a wider base. Uh, I, uh, steeper is the word. Steeper? No, shallower. Shallower is what I'm looking for. I'm doing a really good job, all right? Yeah, you're going to see a very wide base and then a very shallow triangle that just kind of bumps into it. A pair. Chat's given me a pair, um, and my opinion on this is a pair, but moving on with questions. Stage two? Uh, it's what we saw earlier in the stream. I'll pop back to it uh, for anyone watching the VOD because they haven't seen it. Maybe. They might have skipped around. And that was a foolish mistake, Mr. VOD. You should watch the whole stream. When you're looking at stage two, you're going to be looking at something like this. It's a wide base, and then it curves up. And it's because, you know, people die quite fast. Uh, and they're not going to live too long for the most part. And people are being born quite, they're being born at around the same rate as they were before. Uh, they're dying slower, but not incredibly uh, much so. They're still pretty high death rates I, relative to what we have now. But compared to before, like they're nothing. People are immortal compared to stage one. Uh, this is, you Now it's, it's doing pretty good. You got this, people are living up here. It's still a pretty wide base. Moving on to stage three, you're going to see uh, a much straighter steel. Where am I going? I went all the way through. I was trying to get to the question, and somehow I'd assumed all the way past. Moving to stage three, you're going to begin to see a triangle stabilize. Uh, you're going to have a, a smaller base, much smaller. Uh, not, like, tiny yet. But you're going to have a smaller base, and it's just gonna, it's going to go up. It's going to go up quite high. It's going to be quite a steep triangle. Uh, and it's going to be a uh, much, you might have like boomer, um, uh, to, you might have that in stage three, but probably not, or you just see a whole lot of babies born and they stop being born because the birth rate is plummeting. And that's going to look like you have a triangle and then a lump in the triangle. And then it goes back. I was like, you're going to see a very stable triangle in there. When you go into stage four, um, you're going to, you're going to start to see a rectangle forming. There's probably going to be remnants of stage three in your your rectangle, so it's going to look like or not not quite. It's going to be like a, a rectangle that someone punched. It's going to be going in, and it's going to go on, you know, notably faster because of the remnants of stage three. Um, and then after that, once you go to stage five, because now you have you know a uh, rather steep, quite similar, um. The rectangle because obviously the birth rates are very small and death rates are very small. No one's being born, no one's dying. Uh, and they're not really changing. Once you get to stage five, you're going to start to see something that's, you know, very uh, frightening for everyone in the country, where the triangle goes from being a triangle where the people on the bottom can support the people on the top because they can work. You're going to start to see it, you know, turn upside down. It's going to, and that's, that's not what you really want. Uh, and how does it affect the economy? I'll go through economy after, you know, obviously, uh, birth rates have gone lower than death rates. That means less people are being born than are dying, so you're going to see your triangle start to do that until you have, like, this wacky little thing. Uh, effect of the economy, stage one, you've hunter-gatherer society, uh, so a pretty basic one, and you don't see anywhere on Earth. Uh, it just doesn't happen. Stage two, you're going to see a very agriculturally based economy. You're going to be looking at Africa for an example of that modern day. Angola, as we saw before, uh, they're going to be very much third uh, tertiary economies. They're just uh, they're just getting the raw materials. They go mining and they farm, and that's what they do. That's what the economy is. Stage three, you're going to see uh, the beginning of like a real recognizable state that's moving up in the world you're gonna see uh, Brazil as a modern day example of that it's a pretty good one South Africa uh, so those are what those are what you're looking at there they have you know places that are reasonably wealthy everyone's all right they have a, access to medicine modern medicine everyone has access to it just about um, that's a big breakthrough for these countries and you're gonna see these in the secondary sector you're going to see these in the factories uh, they make the goods, the finished goods, whereas stage two countries make the uh, raw materials. 
When you move on to your fourth one, the economy is going to be very primary sector. It's a lot of services. That's going to be the bulk of the economy. Uh, that's, you know, the guy who works at the register on the, uh, on what's it called? The supermarket. That's the doctor. They provide a service to you as opposed to a product to you. And you're going to see uh, everyone lives in this nice middle class house like I do. And everyone's got access to medicine, you know, quite well. No one has to worry about not eating anything and dying uh, pretty much at all. Everyone's doing pretty all right. Move to stage five. You, you've got like crazy stuff. You're doing amazing economically. Except for the fact that there's no children to support the old people. Um, that's, that's what we would see call a growth of the dependent population. Is that locked? All right. A growth of the dependent population. So, um, dependent population of people who can't do work, obviously children can't do work and very, very old senile people cannot do work. Um, and you're going to have to start see, uh, you know, people retire later to fulfill the needs of the country. And you're going to start to see young people have to, uh, either start working earlier or start paying very big bills to, uh, support the people who have retired because there are much more of them than there are the young people. And you're also going to see a uh, quinary and quaternary, uh, as August just put out, uh, economies like be real big. Quinary and quaternary are going to start in stage four. You're going to see them start really developing. You can see in stage three, like the beginnings of them, they're going to get big in stage four. They're going to get big in stage five. Um, on primary is going to be the primary um, sector still. Most people are going to be working in services, but quaternary and quinary are going to be rather large once you get there. I hope that answered your question. Uh, can we talk about how uh, corn man? I can't really discuss personal political views on here. I don't want to get in trouble with my boss. So unfortunately, we cannot talk about that. Stage one is prominent in South America. Uh, I, that's not really a question. But where you see stage one, uh, not South, or do you say South? Yes, yeah, South America. We see stage one, well, in case you're wondering. Uh, you're looking at Brazil, you're looking at Australia, and you're looking at Bangladesh, uncontacted tribes that are still very much in hunter-gatherer stages. Uh, it's not really a question, so I'm going to pop it out. Is healthcare being introduced? Is healthcare being introduced in stage two of the demographic transition model, Jasmine asks? Um, you're going to start to see it introduced definitely, but only at an extremely high price. Not everyone's going to have access to it. Definitely not. Um, but is it going to be introduced? Yes. Question about this on the test. So I, uh, oh man, that'll be a good I messed that up. All right, I'm back. Let me, uh, let me share my screen again. Share screen. Application window. Bring that back. There we go. I accidentally hit one of the buttons on my mouse that makes me go back a page. All right, let me let me see what's in chat before I keep going with the questions. I seriously just uh, email my stream is not my sector topic. All right. What will be an example about this on the test? That's a question right there. Or my uh, or my examples. Um, Salai asks, what would be an example question about this on the test? Uh, it'd be really hard to just manufacture one on the spot, but I can try based on what I got. If anyone has a really good example uh, on just, you know, on the whim, then please provide it. It'd be pretty cool. But what I would go with uh, is, you know, a, maybe a brief description of Malthusian theory. If you're, if you're feeling lucky, they might put that in there. They're going to ask, uh, how did Malthusian theory impact society on the way and the way people thought? What steps were taken to uh, impact Malthusian theory? Uh, and you're probably going to get a question about the Green Revolution and its effects because that's, that's a pretty big idea. Um, that's definitely not going to be perfect at all. But uh, it's, it's, that's the closest I can get. Uh, the kind of questions I got, these, these were disclosed. I'm not going to get a suit if I say them. 
Um, it was a question about food deserts, and it asked what, what kind of uh, information you would use to identify them and the effects of food deserts living on people in them. So it would probably ask about the effects of uh, Malthusian crisis and the effects Malthusian theory had on society and the way people functioned. I can't give you a concrete example, though. Oh, I'm sorry, corn man. My face can't get much bigger because uh, I got to share my screen. I have to deal with it. There's no other way. There's no other way forward. Oh, ask question one. What's the telescope behind me on this telescope? I'm... He's watching the stars. The stars in my ceiling. All right, moving on. I'm moving along here. We're going to do it. It's my time, man. All right. Uh, I, I'm not expecting too much from chat. They seem pretty content in their place. I'm going to give the bod guys, you know, their, their time to answer it. Their time to do what they feel like doing, but define carrying capacity. And what are some factors that impact a region's carrying capacity? Hey, if you're watching the VOD and you want to give it a good funk, you should pause it right now. I really hope you enjoyed that good thunk. All right. So the definition of carrying capacity would be something along the lines of the maximum amount of individuals a region can support. That's not too hard to get down. So factors that would impact it. Um, it's just mainly resources, the resource of space. Uh, if you don't have enough room to live to perform your, uh, your needed functions, you're not going to make it too far. If you got to live in your poop, you're going to get sick and die. If there's uh, food, food's a pretty big one. If there's not enough food, you're going to starve, get sick, or die. Er, and die. Starve or get sick and die. And die is probably an inevitability. Uh, water, it's a pretty big one. Uh, if you don't drink, had to do it to them. It's that sort of thing. It's just resources available to the people in the region. Oh. So, uh, Yeah, Jasmine, that's a pretty solid one. They say carrying capacity is the amount of people a country can support. Uh, country is fine to do. Uh, you might want to say region. It depends on the context of the question. Country is fine. Some factors that impact a region's carrying capacity is the amount of land, food, health-related resources. Yeah, that's all. Those are all correct. Those are all good. If they ask you to like, expound on it in some very meanable, like meaningful way, uh, you're just probably going to have to reiterate how each of those are going to affect someone in specific ways. But for just a basic, like, what is this? Explain it. If you're given the question that's on the screen right now, that's very solid. That'll work extremely well. You're going to get the question right. Now, this is where we're reaching the end of the stream. We're, at, we're, we're, we're here. And I say, follow Think Five. Follow at Think Fiveable. They're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. They're on YouTube. It's Think Fiveable Social. Not Think. It's Fiveable Social Media. Take an AP class. They got the stuff you need. They have all the streams on here, like the links to them. They have all the resources you could ever want. You just follow. It's Think Five, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. There's no excuse not to. Recap what we did in the stream. You can skip over the pop quizzes. Uh, if this is if you need me to go back and run over anything, then I'll go back and run over it. First thing was population density and carrying capacity. We went over Thomas Malthus as a guy, his his little story, and what he noted. Uh, we went over Malthusian theory, the context of when and why it was written, uh, and then why it didn't work. We went over that. Neo-Malthusians, those guys, they're pretty wacky. We went over those. Uh, and now now we're at the open q and This is my last slide. Did they take the... No, we're at open Q&A. Antarctica, be raised by what organs? <laughs> um, all right, August Harvey, uh, they, they post a reasonable statement. The carrying capacity uh, will vary by what organs we carry. Um, yeah, it does mean the region of a specific organism, but no one's going to care if you don't put that. Um, but yeah, obviously something can host more bacteria, most likely, than it can uh, elephants, no matter what the context is. You can probably host more bacteria on it than elephants. Uh, open Q&A. This is just, uh, what have you guys been going over in your classes that you didn't get? What do you want to see streams on in the future? Uh, what do you think we could cover that your teacher didn't cover? Anything like that, uh, we're here. We can edit the stream schedule. We can make sure someone does something that would have been left out if you don't say it. It's just what you guys need. Oh, we got a question here. What are the different types of migration? Uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, Jasmine, uh, just in the chat. 
Uh, do you mean migration models or do you mean like diffusion? Because I'm not 100% on what you mean there, so I can't answer the question good. Um, yeah, so forced migration is you're going over there whether you like it or not. Uh, international migration, it's, uh, that's, you know, I'm in China. I'm about to hop over to, uh, I don't know, France, sort of like internal migration. But uh, it's, it's with regions. I'm moving from the Great Plateau to the not-so-Great Plateau. I don't know. Uh, Sahara Desert to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Something like that. It can be different areas within uh, different regions within a state, obviously. I can move from the Appalachian Mountains to somewhere else. Uh, it's just moving from one, you know, distinct area to another distinct area. Whereas uh, interregional is just I'm moving. I didn't leave my country. International is I'm moving. I left my country. Uh, forced is, yeah, you're going over there. I don't care. Uh, looks like that's everything. No one had anything that didn't get in their class, it would seem. So that's pretty all right. I'm going to pop the stream off then if I remember how to do so. Uh, is it? Oh, that's, yeah, this is how you do it. All right. Hope you guys enjoy your night. Well, is this it? This is this is not it. Oh, oh, oh! Quota loss. I am. Um, that's a question right there. Quota loss. I don't know. Quota. Uh, presumably, it means that you must meet a certain quota. Let me let me get in a better spot. If I'm not having that on. Presumably, it means to be getting a better quota. I'm just working off the words here. I don't know what it means. Very good. Uh, I would assume it's for like a factory worker or something. You got to make this many uh, Hello Kitty toys a day. But don't call me on that at all because I've never heard of quota laws in my life. Really slow, real quick. What kind of trap am I being put into by saying corn man really slow? I will fulfill the request of saying corn man. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of corn. Internally displaced people, um, that means I'm living in the nice town of Westbrook, Ohio. Uh, I made that up. I don't know if that exists. I think that exists. Um, and then it gets bombed. Westbrook, Ohio was gone. I go to, uh, I go to Eastbrook, Ohio. That's where I go to. Uh, now I'm over there. I'm just chilling in Eastbrook, Ohio. Uh, because I've been displaced. I would like to be in Westbrook, Ohio, but it got bombed. Or there was a big drug fight there. Uh, like, I'm in Mexico, and there's a big old drug war where I am, and I don't want to get shot, so I leave. I've been displaced by the drug war. I've been displaced by the bombing of Westbrook, Ohio. It means I would like to be somewhere, but I can't because uh, because of conditions in the area. And so I went somewhere else. I didn't stay there. Got three people left. It looks like it's winding down. 14 people registered for this one. This is pretty good. Let's do this. I don't know what I did, but I'm going to do it more often. Looks like that's everything. I'm going to give it like maybe 30 seconds to see if anything else. Push and pull factors. All right. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, push factors. That is uh, something that makes you want to leave an area. Um, something that would make you an internally displaced person. If, you're, uh, if your town is in the center of a pretty big drug war, then you don't want to stay there. It's pushing you away. It makes you want to leave your town. If your country is going through a civil war, it makes you want to leave the country so you don't die or you don't have to pay the taxes for the war. You can go somewhere with an economy. A uh, pull factor is something that uh, makes you want to go somewhere else. The U.S. has this amazing economy, and it's so, much, it's so easy to get a job. And where I am, it's so hard to get a job. Our economy is pretty, pretty not that good. So I go over to the U.S. It, it's very alluring. There's a lot of freedom in the U.S. And I live under a totalitarian state. I go to the U.S. looks pretty inviting. Uh, well, living under a totalitarian state would be a push factor. I don't want to do that. What do baby booms look like on a population pyramid? Uh, you got your nice triangle, right? Your triangle's doing its triangle thing. But it's like, and then it probably does that. It, it might, whoop or it might just be a whole bump and then continue. Um, yeah, it just looks like there's a lump in your triangle. 
Uh, it might be a sudden like plateau and then it continues, or it might like do the full curve and then go on. Uh, intervening obstacle and intervening opportunity. The intervening obstacle is something you don't want to happen. Uh, I want to go to America, but uh, there, it's being blockaded by pirates that shoot everyone that goes to America. Intervening opportunity. I'm on my way to America. I got hired for a six-figure job in Mexico. I'm not going to America anymore. I've changed my mind. Uh, just that sort of thing. Opportunity is something good. Obstacle is something that, that's hindering you. Um, oh, no, there's no planes or cars or anything. Um, I just have me wagon. I want to go to uh, to the West Coast. But there's these big mountains in the way. That's an intervening obstacle. Are older populations in Stage 5? I'm not 100% on what you mean. Uh, it's not based on the population of a person, if that's what you mean. You're looking at, uh, you're just looking at the dependency ratio of a country, I would say. There's going to be more old people. You're going to have an aging population. The average population is going, or average age of the population is going to be going up. And your birth rate is going to be lower than your death rate. Uh, if older, uh, if older populations, older countries, then I would say no, because Africa is definitely not in stage five. If you mean old people are in stage five, people can't be in a specific stage. Dependency ratio is the uh, the ratio of people who cannot do work or contribute to society to the people who can do work and contribute to society. I think it's uh, zero years old. Everyone who's between age zero and 17, plus everyone who's over the age of 65, uh, under everyone else, under everyone who can do work. It basically measures uh, the strain of the working class on supporting everyone else. Downfall of being in stage five, uh, it's a very hard strain on the working class because uh, as you come up, you either have to retire very late so there is enough money to support you in your retirement because obviously as I work, I pay these bills to support people who are retired. Oh, that's really blurry. To support people who are uh, retired and one day uh, someone's going to pay those bills to support me while I'm retired. So I either have to retire later so enough money has been built up to support me, or um, everyone has to pay much larger bills so enough money is put together that you can support people who have retired. Um, and then every year it's going to go up and up because there's going to be a larger, larger amount of older people. Demographic challenges of stage four countries. Uh, there's... Nothing particularly bad about a stage four country. Generally, you're having a pretty good time once you're in stage four until you get to stage five because then you're having a pretty bad time. Um, but you will start to see that there is a, uh, a lack of ability to fill jobs in an economy that's growing very fast. So you have to start bringing in a lot of migrants. Sometimes uh, you'll see that in things like the U.S. We got to bring in migrant workers to do things. So we don't have enough people being born to fill jobs with a growing economy. Impacts of a large expatriate population. Well, I don't know. What, I don't know what expatriate means. I got to be real with you. It's going to be a long one. I feel like I'm just being quizzed here, but you know what? This is a good time. Uh, is this going to mess up the screen? That's not going to mess up. I, I can do this. Person who lives outside their native country. Um, what you're going to see with a large expatriate um, population, I would then assume, uh, it's just going to be a cultural enclave. You're, you might have a large, a large amount of centrifugal forces in the area, because um, if there's a lot of people living outside their home country, they're going to be very culturally detached from the country they're living in. Uh, you, you might see, you might see otherwise. Uh, centripetal forces, I'll, I'll get to that. But so you, you might see centrifugal forces in the area, and if there's a very, if you say a large amount of expatriate population, yeah, um, you might see the country break away and form a state that's more culturally similar to the one they derived from, or you might see the area get more autonomy. Centripetal forces, those are forces that bind a country together. They, they're the opposite of centrifugal, obviously that tears the country apart. Centripetal forces, uh, something like the national anthem that builds shared pride in the country we're living in. Uh, national sports teams can unify people uh, under their sports team, things like that. The Pledge of Allegiance uh, is an example. Um, other things that aren't just symbolic, 
uh, what is it called? Economic, economic, uh, oh my God, advancement, economic advancement. Um, that's not the word I'm looking for, but I, I might have to run with it. I really don't want to. I guess I'll, I'm running with economic advancement. Um, yeah, if your economy is quite good, it's going to bind everyone together because why would you want to be somewhere else if your economy is so great? Freedoms is quite good. It can bind a country together. Why would I want to uh, to do something else, to go somewhere else, to be something else if I'm so free or my economy is so good? Physiological density. Uh, I'm one of that early in the stream. I don't think you were there for it. Um, yeah, physiological density is the amount of people over the total square kilometers of arable lands in a region. Uh, it basically tells you the string of the uh, the agricultural producers on supporting the people. Ravenstein's laws of migration. Uh, I believe those were the ideas of. I, haven't, I, I didn't get my migration laws or theories down very well, but I think those were the ideas of, uh, it wasn't intervening obstacles, was it? I think it was similar to gravity theory, I think. We're in, um, people are going to be more attracted to larger areas, like a big city, they're going to want to migrate there. People migrate in chains. They move to a city pretty close to them and they move to another one. Um, that forms cultural enclaves in the area. There's going to be a city that's very uh, that's very Chinese, and another city where they move to next. It's going to form a chain of very uh, ethnically distinct areas from the country of origin. Thank you. That's all. All right. I'm not seeing anyone else asking questions. I'm going to assume there's no more questions. Hope you all have a very nice night. That's the end of the stream. I know something else might click this, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna have to say goodbye.